Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we have the opportunity to work on another reel that Scott found out at a West Coast uh, flea market. I believe it was in the Pasadena area. And while well, this is a beautiful reel, it doesn't look like it's hardly been fished. The reel is a Gladding South Bend. The model number is an 840. We've done some of the larger ones, but I haven't done one this size yet. So I thought maybe we would do that to show you how to service it, how it was made, maybe a little bit of the company history. So South Bend, well, like its namesake, South Bend, Indiana is where it was formed. And while well, they ran into some financial difficulty and Gladding, who was a line and rope and cable maker, uh, while well, they bought, uh, bought South Bend and uh, started manufacturing the South Bend reels with the Gladding tag on it. And then Gladding ran into financial difficulty and sold off South Bend later on. And while well, Gladding still exists today, but it exists in the big cable and uh, roping lines, not, uh, not as a fishing tackle manufacturer any longer. And uh, South Bend was acquired by uh, a company out in the uh, Chicago, Illinois area. I think it might be called Big Mountain Sports, but I could be wrong with that. And uh, well, it uh, continues to have South Bend reels produced today. Those South Bend reels uh, have a tag on them usually, R2F, ready to fish, and they continue to provide value priced reels for uh, occasional fishing folks. And uh, well, we'll take a look at this one, which I think was from the 1980s. It could be wrong. The reel itself is about the size of a Mitchell 300, maybe just a tad bigger. Uh, it can be used uh, inshore ocean, deep lake fishing, surf casting, and the like. And uh, well, we'll just get inside. We'll show you the design of it, how to service it, and uh, well, how to keep it fishing for a long time to come. If you like these types of videos, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, I ask you to hit that notification button. Well, I'll let you know when I'm posting videos, and well, you can make a determination as to whether that's a video you would like to see or not. Okay, we're going to start by taking off the exterior pieces. The first part we're going to take off is the spool. To do that, you're going to remove the drag adjuster knob. When you unscrew that by turning that counterclockwise, you can pull the screw, the spool up and off. When I remove my pieces and parts, I like to put them into a parts tray. That way I know where they are when it comes time to reinstall. Let's see if this is one of those. Yes, it is. There's some of these handles will screw off and some of those you need to knock the pin out. I just had a question on, uh, from someone that said, are all of the pins on these reels the same size? And the answer is no, they're not. You'll find various models have different types of pin setups on, on some reels. And uh, there's two things you need to worry about. You need to worry about the same size diameter of the pin, otherwise it won't fit in. And the other one is the distance between the pin and the end of the handle because that varies as well on certain shafts. So even though you may find a pin that's the right size, that handle may not be replaceable uh, simply by knocking out the pin and changing over to a different arm only because the width from the pin location to the, uh, the shaft of the uh, screw may be different. Okay, in this case we can just turn that out. I want to make sure that I have this in the off position when I go to remove the pieces because if you leave it in the on position there's a chance that you may catch it on the way out and disturb the anti-reverse dog and uh, if you don't know where the anti-reverse dog goes it might be difficult to reposition it for installation. And the other thing I like to do with that is on installation if that dog is in the off position then the, um, you'll have no problem getting that main gear in, where if it's in the on position from time to time, you may trap that dog underneath that main gear. Okay, well, this is going to tell us a lot right now, and one of the things that will also tell you a lot is a picture. I recommend that you take pictures along the way, because when you get to critical points in your disassembly or in the maintenance of the reel, and maybe you have to put the reel down or leave the project for the day or whatever it may be, and uh, well, just don't trust your memory. Take a picture. That'll tell you where the uh, orientations of, are of the pieces and parts and well, how to put it back together again if you wind up with that question. And this is a, a simple enough one. It has a main gear, a crosswind block, 
a uh, stud on the main gear to cause the wheel to go up and down. It has a uh, attachable rotor uh, where the pinion gear is actually part of that rotor and uh, while well, it all comes together being held in place by one screw. This is a good place for a picture because it's easy enough when you go to reinstall to turn this cross wind block around and have that screw here on the bottom be up top. Well you can do it on this reel but the reel won't work so take the notes make sure that you understand where those pieces and parts are and uh, well, make sure they go back together again. So Scott purchased this reel at a flea market and flea markets are great places to find used fishing equipment but you need to make sure that you take certain precautions if you're doing that. You need to test all of the mechanical features of a reel uh, if you're considering buying that and of course you, there's no reason why you can't buy a reel that's not performing well but you need to take that into consideration in the pricing and you need to know what you may be in for. It may be a broken piece or part and on a reel like this, pieces and parts are very difficult to come by. This shaft comes out as a single piece. It has a uh, pressed on click ratchet that's going to make the noise from this little clicker down here when the spool starts to run out. Also notice you got a pipe cleaner here as a water seal. That's part of the design. You could use a pipe cleaner if this breaks off or if it breaks off and you can't find anything as a substitute, you can run this reel without that. It's just kind of a squeegee effect to keep the water out of the bowl. Okay, this also has a washer on the main axle shaft, and that's to control the height of the spool for line gathering purposes. If you have, find that you have a spool where all the line's coming up top, it means the spool's not sitting high enough on the axle shaft, you would add a washer. If uh, all the line is gathering on the bottom, it says it's coming up too high, you would remove a washer to, uh, to correct that issue. While I take the pieces and parts off, I do like to clean them. That's why I use my paper towels. I like to stay with the least abrasive method possible. But from time to time, you may need a kitchen scrubby or some steel wool or something to kind of free up some old grease. If you do, uh, just be careful as you do it and use a, use a solvent like a uh, penetrating oil to do that. That's the orientation. As I mentioned, you could put it in upside down, so make sure that you note those things as they come along. This one has a integrated pinion gear into the rotor and it's held in place by a C-clip. That C-clip can be removed by coming to the inside of the reel and pushing out. I'm using a little pick. You could use a screwdriver and some other things. And when you get the room up top here where you can see it's separating, then you can kind of pry it out that way. So this is the clip. This clip can go in from either direction, but it does have a little bit of a bend in it. So just kind of note that the shiny side was going up to keep some tension on it. With the clip removed, you can pull the bowl out. And that's going to be important for cleaning you can see we have some old greases and dirt and the like on that. First thing to do then is just kind of wipe off what you can. Use a penetrating oil. Kind of soak it. In this case I'm using a WD-40 as a penetrating oil. But there are others out there and they're, they all work fine as far as I'm concerned. Get a bristle brush and pull through that gear. That will enable you to get the old greases from there. And then use that cotton swab go inside and kind of clean up the interior because there's usually some old greases and dirt in there as well. With that uh, side set, we've already tested the bail. We know that works. There's a little bit of, well, it's almost dust, but this reel's in very good condition. So let's take some fishing meal oil, oil up that section there, a little bit of oil onto the seam where the bail sits. You can put a little bit of oil in here. This is a dead end, but you can oil that and oil the line roller as well. Just work it in, work it back and forth a little bit. One of the things that's interesting about this reel is it has a collapsible bail. That means that you can bring the bail down when you're not using it so that you don't risk it kind of getting banged around and bent out of shape in storage. All you have to do is pull this lever back and it will collapse down for safekeeping. Alright, that's the rotor. 
There's only one piece left in here. There's some cleaning we got to do. This is the trip lever. But the only other piece is the main gear now. I'm going to just turn that up. Let me just grab it. Oh, look, look at that. It's coming out all by itself. Isn't that nice? We have some dried grease behind there. And the penetrating oil works great as a solvent. So let's go ahead and use that. I'm going to grab another cotton swab and kind of mop up. Now, as I'm doing that, I want to encourage you to ask questions. The whole idea behind Second Chance Tackle is to teach you how to service the reels yourself, how to keep them running, and in some cases, uh, well, provide some guidance or some tips and techniques on the fishing industry or maybe the histories of manufacturers or that, just to, to help you with your understanding. I'm going to pass along what I know so that, uh, well, you can enjoy the art of reel repair as well. So, ask the questions. And again, if, you, uh, if you're so inclined, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please use the notification button to uh, let you know when I'm posting. I've been posting a lot lately, uh, almost every day. And uh, if you uh, don't want to miss any of those, that notification button is a good way to do that. All right, well, you can see from the paper towel, there's been a lot of grease and junk and dirt and the like. And that's usually typical of what happens with a reel that hasn't been serviced in a while. So just take good care to do that. This one, uh, well, we wouldn't have gotten too much trouble with this anti-reverse dog by leaving it out and having it pop off because it's held in by a clip. But make sure you're in the off position when you go to reinstall. There's just a little bit more dirt on this one here, a little piece of dried grease. So let's get that out of the way. This is just a, uh, a pick that comes in one of those inexpensive uh, multi-tool type kits. I would recommend you keep a variety of tools on hand that will enable you to kind of get the right one for the job. All right. Check your main gear. Make sure that all of the teeth are in good condition. These are. I'm going to use that hard bristle brush again. You can use a toothbrush or this one came in a variety pack. It had a steel and brass wire brush in addition to the bristle brush. But uh, Make sure that uh, you make sure that all the grooves in the teeth are clean, and uh, then you're ready for uh, well, reinstall. Use fishing reel oils and greases. In this case, I use Pen. It's Pen Precision Reel Grease. I don't have a preference for greases, so uh, it doesn't matter if you're using Pen, Shimano, Quantum, or any of the uh, uh, aftermarket or secondary market kind of things like hot sauces and things. Just uh, make sure it's a fishing reel grease. They're designed for the fishing environment and they stand up better than general household greases. All right, you want to get grease on all of the teeth. You want to get grease on the face where that cross wine block is going to ride. And you want to get some grease on that back shaft, which is going to go through the case. All right, reinstall the gear by pushing it down and in. And a good thing to do right here is grab that handle and put the handle back on. That'll hold that main gear in place so that you don't have to worry about it coming out when you go to reinstall that uh, the rotor. Okay, we'll leave that in place. The rotor we've cleaned up, so now it's just a matter of reinstalling that. To do that, we're going to do the same thing. We check all the teeth, make sure that they weren't damaged. A lot of that you, you check when you're first testing a reel to see if there's anything you need to address. You'll notice a skip if the teeth are damaged. All right, same idea there. Now we can bring that through the top. And you want to merge that in with the main gear. Just like that. You need to make sure that you're tight on the base and then you can go and take that U-clip, get it into the seam on both sides, and press that down so that it is flush with the lip of this case. The outer case will hold that on when it's uh, time to seal it up so that clip won't pop back out. A little bit of grease onto the crosswind blocks. Indentation, that's the only place on this piece that needs grease. You remember what we said, we took the pictures, the screw hole is below, just as an example, it could very easily be turned upside down 
the reel won't work properly. It will work and stop when it bumps up there. But make sure that it's in the down position. With the axle shaft, go ahead and just a very light coating of uh, grease on that and bring that through the top. You're going to note that there's that hole in that axle shaft right there. You're going to want to line that hole in the axle shaft with the hole in the cross one block. When you do that, hold the axle shaft. I'm kind of pinching it to the uh, bottom part. And then just grab a screwdriver and tighten up that screw that holds the cross wind block to the axle shaft. At this point, you can give it a crank and make sure that it's all working well. Look at that, how nice and smooth it is. You can also go back and re-engage now that anti-reverse with a little music maker. This one's nice and smooth. Again, you can see when it comes up on the top of that stroke that if this was upside down, this would be bumping that uh, pinion gear there. Okay, the case goes back on. The three side plate screws come out of my parts tray. These seem to be magnetic, so I'm going to say these are steel because I have a magnetic tip on this screwdriver and it seems to be holding that screw when it's loose. Take your time for this. You don't get uh, prizes for finishing first. You get uh, satisfaction from finishing correctly. This is the second one. And there will be one more we want to put in. side over here and then we'll show you about the how to service the spool and uh, give it the final test okay those are done nicely take the spool you're going to see that there's a big C ring riding in a groove inside the spool here and a uh, pick so that you can pull that ring out and hold it. It's going to spring. It's a clip. So if you don't put your finger on there or pay attention to it, that thing could wind up in the next zip code. It's right there. All right. You want to note the order, the sequence of these. First one is a wavy washer. It's not flat. Don't attempt to flatten it. And we're going to clean the channel out of this. If there was rough greases or oils or dirt or things like that, go ahead and use that penetrating oil to help dissolve that stuff. In this case, uh, we're in good condition with this. And put that wavy washer back. That goes in the base. Next up then is a eared washer. This is a single drag system, so it does not have a lot of max drag in it. This next one is an eared washer. It has a hole in the center and two points on each end. Then we have a hard washer. It's plastic. That's okay. That goes in the middle. Then we have a washer that's got a little stud coming out of here. It's nice to pay attention to it. It's right here. That goes on the top. That will be important for when you go to mount the spool back onto the axle shaft. And then we have our ring. Start on the one side in the groove. Kind of walk it around. This one's a lot of tension under it. So you may need a little assist. Sometimes I'll use a, a screwdriver or something to give me that assist. There we go. And then just make sure that it seats into the groove. There you go. So that's how to service the spool. When you look at your axle shaft now, you're going to notice there's a groove here, right there. That's where the stud from inside that spool is going to line up to and go through in order to properly seat that, which is how you do it there. One more piece then is to take that drag adjuster knob and put that on. And we're set up for a test. So Scott found this one at a flea market. 
and uh, that's a great place to find fishing reels and the like. Just make sure that you test them out. We just had one, that, uh, well, nobody saw it coming. He had a, um, a Zebco 404 that pretty much had a smashed case and was behaving as though it was just dried grease. So sometimes, you, even with your best uh, intentions of trying to figure it out, sometimes it just uh, gets the better of you. Remember that reels are out of flea market for a particular reason. Uh, you like to think that maybe they were pre-owned and somebody upgraded the equipment didn't need it anymore. Maybe somebody took very good care of the equipment and just uh, decided that uh, they didn't want to or couldn't go fishing any longer and wanted to pass it on. Sometimes they're just passing off something that's broken and you just need to recognize if it is broken what the uh, recourse may be in terms of repairing it. Okay. This is ready for the, the return. Fresh oil, fresh grease, spins like a champ. This reel is a nice reel. Everything turns nice and free and easy on it. That's a beautiful example of a uh, 1980s reel. And I'm thinking this one, this one was made in Hong Kong. So neither uh, Gladding nor uh, South Bend were manufacturers. They, uh, they bought what was called trade reels. And in this case, this one was made in Hong Kong. All right, the Gladding South Bend 840. That's the, uh, the reel that we've just worked on. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, uh, please like the video. And again, if you'd like to see more of these, please subscribe. To our first responders who dedicate their life to civil service and keeping us safe, thank you for all it is that you do. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well. Keep your fishing equipment ready to go. You never know when the bite will be on. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.